To be able to move into our house, we need toilets, a bathroom, a kitchen, heat for winter, something to keep that heat in, and to clean the house up. First, let's start with the bathroom. We decided to raise the height of the floors in the bathhouse by about 50 centimeters to the same height as the rest of the house. We were also essentially creating three new rooms, the bathroom, a changing room, and a storeroom. I really wish I'd applied the anti-termite paint before the carpenter put the floor in. A unit bath is a factory produced bathroom module that includes the walls, floors, ceiling and bathtub. They're very popular these days in Japan as they are easy to clean and maintain. We wanted some of the convenience of a unit bath but with a little less plastic. So we got what is called a half unit. So while the base is plastic you can do what you want with the walls and ceiling. We decided to use Hinoki, which is a Japanese cypress for our ceiling and walls. It's a highly resinous wood, so it's very strong against mold and moisture and has a beautiful scent. For the vanity unit we also decided to use large slabs of hinoki. To protect the counter from water I applied a ceramic paint which also maintained the natural wood colour. I also cleaned it and painted the beams and applied shikui to the ceiling. Now all that was left to do was install the boiler. We're getting what is called an echo cute. It's a, an efficient electric carbon dioxide cooled boiler.
This is an extractor fan and heater. This vent above where the wood burning stove is going to go is to allow some light to come in from the dormer windows above and also to allow heat to escape during summer. During winter we actually cover it with clear perspex to prevent heat from escaping. For the wood stove surround we're using oyeishi. It's a stone that is only found in one spot in Tochigi prefecture which is about an hour away from here. You might remember the Tyler from my previous video. He's the guy that did the shikui on the ranma for us. And he also did the tiles in the bathroom. There is some concern about the proximity of those posts to the stove so we use heat barriers to prevent them from getting too hot and they seem to have done the trick so far. We've been getting plenty of wood from local building sites, cemeteries. In fact, got more wood than you can poke a stick at. In order to repaper these shoji screens we need to get them off and clean them. 
but the beam at the top there has sunk a little and we can't actually get them off. So I'm using this car jack in order to lift them slightly. It's not so easy. The Tatagoya-san, who specializes in making doors such as shoji, uh, he's uh, going to adjust the size of the shoji for us so that they fit properly and we can slide them and get them out and in easily next time. He also made some new shoji for us for some of the new windows. For the paper, my wife's using this extra bright shoji we just got at the local DIY store.
she did all of the shoji by herself. I have to admit I was pretty impressed. Apart from the new shoji that you saw a moment ago, all of the other shoji is the original shoji that came with the house. So they're custom made to fit the beams and posts and there's a specific order that you need to put them in at. Most of the shoji here have what is called yukimi or snow doors I guess and they're the glass sections at the bottom so you can raise the shoji up to be able to look outside if you were sitting on the floor. My wife was never going to move in until the toilets were installed as she has no interest at all in ever using the port that we had outside during most of the construction. We wanted a kitchen island so that we would be a little bit more connected to the family while we were preparing and cooking food. We also wanted it to be a decent size and a decent height as the standard height of kitchens in Japan is a little bit low for me. So the carpenter made this for us according to the architect's design. It's made mostly of hinoki. The countertop is Korean. One of the other things I really wanted was a full-sized oven, which again is not that common in Japan. So this is a 200 volt electric oven.
Of course, we can't survive without internet. So here we've got some fiber optic cable up to the house. Even so, it's not that fast in our area, but it's good enough. And electricity finally connected directly to the house. So we packed up all of our belongings into the back of the car and finally made the move. And after a long day of moving, we celebrated having our brand new kitchen by ordering pizza. And we made it in before Christmas. So you might be wondering, what about the bedrooms? Well, this is what they look like. So we're sleeping on futon on the floor of the living room.